الحمد للہ وقفا وصلاۃ وسلام علی عباد الزین استفا اما بعد فاعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم رب شاہلی صدری و یسر علی عمری وحل القدم السانی یفقہ قولی اللہ مسل علی محمد و علی عال محمد کما صلی تعالی ابراہیم و علی عال ابراہیم ان کا حمید المجید اللہ مبارک علی محمد و علی عال محمد کما بارک تعالی ابراہیم و علی عال ابراہیم ان کا حمید المجید وعن ابن عمر رضی اللہ تعالی عنہما قال اخذ رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم من کبھی فقال کل فی الدنیا کان کا غریب و نعابر و سبیل وکان ابن عمر رضی اللہ عنہما یقول ازا امسیت فلا تنتظر الصباح و ازا اصبحت فلا تنتظر المساء وخذ من صحتك لمرضك ومن حياتك لموتك رواه الامام البخاري رحمه الله Dear brothers and sisters and sons and daughters in Islam assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Aldo last morning at the end of the dars of hadith yesterday I announced that today I will be taking some ahadith out of this collection of 40 ahadith compiled by Imam Nawawi regarding the structure of Islam, how to preserve it, how to strengthen it. But then I decided that today I am going to take and I announced it in the evening session, as you must be remembering. I want to take certain ahadis, four ahadis out of this collection of 40 ahadis, which discuss what is commonly known as the sawwuf. So to say, we shall be understanding today the tasawwuf Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Suluke Muhammadi. As I told you, the two terms of the of suluk and maqamat. Suluk is you are traveling. You are covering some distance. And stations come one after the other during this journeying. Now one thing I must say, and I said it before also, that is most unfortunate, most unfortunate, most unfortunate that a term made its way, its way into the Islamic academic world which was absolutely alien, which has no root in the whole of Quran, no mention of it in the whole of Hadith, What was more unfortunate was that it displaced and replaced one of the most fundamental terms of Quran and Hadith. It became a barrier. This tasawwuf, which is so commonly used, so commonly used, not only by the common people, by the very learned people also. It has no root whatsoever in Quran. It has never appeared in the whole of the Hadith. <clears throat> so much so that its root is also doubtful, whether it is from Suf or Safa. The people who want to defend this term, they say that it is from Safa. You should have safai, cleanliness within you, the tazkiyah of your nafs. But by no rule of Arabic grammar, from the root of safa, this word tasawwuf 
can be derived. The only possibility is that it can be derived from Suf. Suf means wool. Because the early Sufiya as they were, they were known, and they, as they were called, they used to wear woolen dress, without any underdress, mind you. Don't think of the dresses of today. The undershirt and then the shirt and then something else and then something else. They used to be one cloth, one shirt. And you can imagine if it is woolen, it will keep biting you. And that is what they wanted. To relinquish the comforts and luxury. And to remain in some sort of pain. So that their attention remains focused to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the only possibility that from Suf to Sawwuf can be derived. But here again, this word has not appeared in Quran or Hadith for that issue or for that matter at all. Now, second thing that I want to mention here, it's a very sad incident that took place about an year and a half ago. There's a big circle of tasawwuf. In Pakistan also, there are many adherents to that circle. In Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates, there are also many people attached to it. Now, some people attached to this circle. Maulana Muhammad Akram Awan is the Murshid or the spiritual guide of this circle. Some people belonging to that circle. They took a speech of mine, which I had delivered about the Sawwuf, in which I had analyzed this and this and this part of the Sawwuf is okay, compatible with Quran and Hadith. Not only compatible, these are the main objectives and goals of the teaching of Quran and Hadith. But such and such and such aspects are wrong. They have intruded into the world of Islam from outside. Either from the religions, especially the philosophical and mystic religions of India, or from the Neoplatonism, which was the school of philosophy and mysticism started in Alexandria by Plotinus. These have been two centers of mysticism, very important. Egypt, Alexandria, Neoplatonism, this is called, but actually it's Philatinus, Plotinus, who is the chief originator. Big philosopher, big sage, no doubt. And on the other hand, in India, Shankaracharya, the biggest exponent of Wahdatul Wujud. Same is the case with Plotinus, biggest exponent of Wahdatul Wujud in the West. Another one in the West was Ibn Arabi of Andalus, I think by far the biggest among all the four. There are four exponents, most important exponents of Wadatul Wajud. Two from India, two from the West. Plotinus of Alexandria, Ibn Arabi of Andalus, Shankaracharya of India, and Abdul Qadir Bedil of India. But from these two sides, many things creeped into intruded into the Islamic mysticism, as you may call it. Now, I, in my speech, analyzed this and this and this 
aspect of the Samuf is okay. Not only compatible with Quran and Sunnah, but also they are the main objectives. But this and this aspect, it is from some foreign origins, they are alien, they are wrong. Now what do they do? Some brothers of that circle, living in Riyaz, they picked my cassette, deleted the portions which were criticizing the Tasawwuf and joined together all the portions which were supporting the Tasawwuf and they marketed it. And they marketed it as a speech of mine. This is the biggest dishonesty. And coming from a circle belonging to and claiming to be a circle of Tazki and Nafs. And I recall here Professor Yusuf Salim Chishti, Rahimahullah. Brother Imran knows him very well. He has been a student of his in Karachi. He used to teach at the Islamic Center of North Nazimabad, Karachi, the comparative religion. During the summer months which he used to pass in Karachi, he couldn't bear the scorching heat of Lahore. Rest of the year he used to stay in Lahore. He compiled a book on Islamic mysticism. And one section of that book was under the title Islami Tasawwuf Me Ghair Islami Nazriyat Ki Amezish. How the non Islamic concepts intruded and entered and creeped into Islamic mysticism. Whole of the book was published by the Department of Awqaf, except this part. I took the courage of publishing that book, that part of the book. The rest of it was published by the Department of Awqaf of Punjab, but deleting this portion. I published that portion. And in that portion of the book, or the book now, because we publish it as a separate book, he quoted incidents that it happened in the very life of certain people, certain authors. For example, an author is living in Damascus, and he has become famous. Now one of such authors, he went to another city, say Kufa or Basra or Baghdad, went to the mosque. And there was a circle in which someone was delivering lecture on his book. Now the author is there in the audience. And his book is being taught here. And he sees that the ideas which never occurred to him they were being attributed to him, written in the book. So I have experienced such a thing in my own life also. Still I am living. The whole cassette is there. But this is something very sad, very sad, very sad. For me it was more important regarding one special aspect. I was shocked that is the Savu so weak that it needs such support? They need my support. It shows they don't have any self confidence. This is another aspect. <coughs> Anyhow, what is Islamic tasawwuf if I am, I can accept this term for the time being. I have already told you, it is nothing except Ihsan. The real term of Quran and Sunnah is Ihsan. 
This is the last and the highest position or station of spiritual elevation of a person. Islam, Iman, Ihsan. We have these three mentioned in the Hadith of Jibreel. And we have the same three in the ayah of Surah Maida. لَيْسَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ جُنَاحٌ فِي مَا تَعِمُوا اِذَا مَتَّقَوْا وَآمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ سُمَّ تَقَوْا وَآمَنُوا سُمَّ تَقَوْا وَأَحْسَنُوا وَاللَّهُ يُحِبُّ الْمُحْسِنِينَ And what is Ihsan? That also we have understood. It's nothing except the intensity and depth of Iman. Nothing else. When this Iman bil ghayb reaches in its intensity and depth the level of Iman bil shahada. When you start believing in the unseen just as you believe in what you see. If that distinction disappears for you, regarding the intensity of your belief and conviction, the distinction will remain there. Ghaib is ghaib and is shahada is shahada. But your iman will ghaib which is the intensity, the same intensity with which you believe in what you can see with your own eyes. This is Isa. And let me quote here a saying of Confucius, the biggest sage China has produced. He says, there's nothing more real than what cannot be seen. And nothing more certain than what cannot be heard. These external senses, you can have doubt about them. Aachi may be name, but be daris, ya rab, ya be khab. Oh Allah, what I am seeing. Whether I am seeing it in a vision, in a dream, or in the real material world. You can't believe what you are seeing. Sometimes it happens. Sometimes you feel it is some hallucination. There is no voice. You know, my ears are telling me, telling a lie. You can doubt your external senses and perceptions. But the inner perception that you get, there is a level when all doubts disappear. And that is the level discussed in ayah number 15 of Surah Al-Hujurat. إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ سُمَّ لَمْ يَرْتَابُوا No rap. Well, this is Ihsan. Please note these things as formulas of algebra. There is no tasawwuf except ihsan. And there is no ihsan except the intensity and depth of iman and nothing else. If you keep these premises in your view, then you will never be led astray. You will never feel the need to go this way, that way. How to attain that? How to attain that? The thirst within you. I am recalling one of the sentences of that long hadith of the Prophet Whosoever wants to have guidance from anything else other than Quran, Allah will definitely lead him astray. 
سو اف یو ہیو اینی ادر کانسیپٹ آف تصوف اینی ادر کانسیپٹ آف ایمان پلیز واش یور مائنڈس آف آل سچ کانسیپٹس آل دوز تھنگس آر ایلین ٹو اسلام دے ہیو انٹریوڈرس دے آر دی انٹریوڈرس انٹریوڈیڈ ان ٹو دی ورلڈ آف اسلام فرام دی ایسٹ اور دی ویسٹ فرام دی نیو پلیٹونزم آف الیگزینڈریا اور فرام دی ویدانتا آف انڈیا ایز آئی ٹول یو دیٹ ان دس کلیکشن آف فورٹی ہاردیز امام نووی has selected ahadith from this aspect and that aspect, the third aspect, the fourth aspect of deen. Today we are going to study four ahadith which discuss this special aspect of Islam and Iman. Now, let me mention one thing more before we start reading the text of the hadith. And it's very important for a student of Quran to note it. Generally, we think that the first thing to which the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu called was Tawheed. It's a mistake. If you read the early surah of the Quran, those discuss Resurrection and Akhara and Inzar, not Tawheed. Al-Qari'ah, Mal-Qari'ah, wa ma adraka Mal-Qari'ah. Al-Haqqa, Mal-Haqqa, wa ma adraka Mal-Haqqa. Amma yatasaloon anin nabai allazi hum fihe mukhtalifoon. Kalla sayalamoon, summa kalla sayalamoon. What are these? The condemnation which came in Quran in the very beginning was for those who believe that this is the only life. And because they believe it is the only life that we have, no resurrection. Morally, they are bound to go down. بابر بحث کوش کہ عالم دوبارہ نیز دیٹ از وائی دیئر کیریکٹرس لک ٹو دیم وہ آر دے اور آیت اللہ دی یو کزبو بن دین فضالک اللہ دی یدعو یتیم ولا یحضو علا تعام المسکین دیس از دیئر کیریکٹر کلا بل تحبون العاجلہ و تذرون الاخرہ بل توسرون الحیات الدنیا والاخرہ تو خیر و عبقہ The first subject, and I discussed this on that town hall meeting also. What was the starting point of the prophetic mission of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam? Ya yuhal mudassir, kum fa ansir. Warn them. Don't be mistaken. Don't take to the attitude, Babar Bhaiyash Kosh ki alam dobara niis. زَامَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا وَلَّيُّ بَعْسُوا قُلْ بَلَا وَرَبِّي لَتُبْعَسُنَّ سُمَّ لَتُنَبَّوْنَ بِمَا عَمِلْتُمْ وَذَالِكَ عَلَى اللَّهِ يَسِيرٌ And I quoted the, one of the first sermons that the Prophet delivered. وَاللَّهِ لَتَمُوتُنَّ كَمَا تَنَعْمُونَ سُمَّ لَتُبْعَسُنَّ كَمَا تَسْتَيْخِزُونَ سُمَّ لَتُحْسَبُنَّ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ وَإِنَّهَا لَجَنَّةٌ أَبَدَا أَوْ لَنَارٌ أَبَدَا Now, if somebody really believes in this, a verbal attestation is something else. Leave it aside, we are not discussing it. That is the basis of Islam. You will be accepted as a Muslim in this world. You will enjoy the rights of full citizenship in an Islamic state. You will be accepted as a member of Islamic society. That's all. We are discussing real Iman. But if that real Iman reaches 
the level of that conviction? What will be the result? Maybe we can imagine. But we will have to tax our capacity of imagination also. To imagine a person who really believes that the real life is the life of the hereafter. The real life is the life of the hereafter. Only if they had known it. To say you believe in it is easy. But to know it. Not an easy thing. All the worldly attachments. All the worldly attractions. Distract you. Continuously. 24 hours a day. And 365 days of an year. Attractions and connections, relations. Ye maal o dolat e dunia, ye rishta o paywand, botan e vahmo khuma, la ilaha illallah. Are these the idols of our imagination only? We are pursuing them. We are running after the shades and shadows. Leaving alone the realities. But if this conviction in resurrection and the life hereafter becomes your real feeling, it becomes your hal, not kaal only. What will be the result that is given in this hadith? And this is hadith number 40. Now, so to say, it is the collection of 40 hadiths. And this is hadith number 40, the final, the climax. Although Imam Nabawi had it and has added another two ahadiths, really it is a collection of 42 ahadiths. And I am going to add another one to make it 43. But that is something which I am not going to discuss at this time. Now the result. of real conviction in resurrection and the life of hereafter is given by this hadith. An ibn Umar radiyallahu anhu ma qal. It is narrated from the son of Umar, Abdullah ibn Umar radiyallahu anhu ma. He said, Akhaza Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ibn Kabi. Now just imagine. Abdullah ibn Umar belongs to the second generation of Sahaba. I told you, three lines. First line, along with the Prophet ﷺ, Abu Bakr, Umar, Hamza, Abdurrahman ibn Auf, Talha, Zubair, and so on and so forth. The second line, these younger generation, son of Abdullah, Ibn Abbas, Abdullah ibn Abbas, son of Abbas, son of Umar, Abdullah ibn Umar, son of Amr ibn al-As, Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As, and so on and so forth. Now, keep in mind this gap of generation. Generation gap. And what the Prophet did? Ibn Umar says he took hold of me by my shoulder placed his hand on my shoulder and said, Kun fi dunya ka anna ka gharibun aabir sabir. Be in this world, live in this world, as if you are a stranger. You don't belong to this world. You belong somewhere else. This is not your place. Stranger. Kun fi dunya ka anna ka gharibun. Aw aabiru sabilin. Or only a wayfarer. A traveler pursuing some path, some road. A 
if you have interest in this world more than a traveler has to his road or path, you don't have the real Iman. Live here as strangers. There's another hadith the Prophet said. Mali walid dunya innama masali ka raqib in istadalla tahta shajalatin summa raha fatarakaha. What do I have to do with this world of yours? Mali walid dunya. I am like a traveler, a rider on a camel who stays for a while under the shade of a tree to take rest. And then he leaves it and takes to his path. Mali walid dunya innama masali karaqib in istadalla tahta shadatin summa raha fataraka. It's not his house, it's not his home. Now try to feel it and try to assess yourself. Hasibu and fusakum min qabli an tuhasabu. Assess yourself before that day that you are that day that you are assessed by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is what allah iqbal has said wahi hai tere zamane ka imam e barhaq jo tujhe hazir o maujood se bezar kare not that you love it not that you like to have me here. At dunya sijnul mu'mine wa jannatul kafir. Nobody likes to remain in prison. He has been sentenced to a term in prison. Our souls have been sentenced to a period of distance from Allah. It is from Allah. That is why the first couplet of the Basnavi of Imam Rum, what is it? Bishnu aznae chu hikayat mi kunat, bas judai ha shikayat mi kunat. The melodious voice that is coming out of that, nay, what will you call it? Flute. What is it? Bishnu aznae. It is complaining of separation. It was a part of a tree cut out from there. Now the voice that is coming out of it, which is thrilling your heart, is actually the complaint that it is making. Because it has been separated from its root. And the same should be the condition of the soul and spirit of a person who has realized his soul, who has realized his spirit. And let me quote here another thing from Upanishad. Most of you must have heard, I have repeatedly quoted it. Man in his ignorance identifies himself with the material sheaths which encompass his real self. The real self is something else. This body is a material sheath. Then these clothings are another material sheath. And this bedroom or the drawing room is another material sheath. These are the material sheaths covering the real existence of my mind and that is my soul and spirit. But due to ignorance, he identifies himself with the material sheets. He just forgets his real essence. Don't 
Now to complete this hadith. This was the saying of the Prophet Sallallahu As a murshid. I am now using this word as a murshid. He said to Abdullah ibn Umar. Holding him by his shoulder. Kun fi dunya ka anna ka gharibun wa abiru sabeel. Wa kaan ibn Umar radiyallahu anhu ma yaqool. Now this is the saying of Hazrat Abdullah ibn Umar himself. This we call, according to technical terminology of hadith, it is asar. Khabar and asar. Khabar is from from Prophet, asar is from the companions. But that is included in hadith. This is also hadith. Iza amsayta falatan tadris masa sabah. When you have the evening in your this life, this life, don't think that the morning will also come. Iza amsayta falatan tadris masa sabah. Don't wait for it. Don't think it will definitely come. I will rise again tomorrow from my sleep. Wa iza asbahta falatan tadri al masa. And if Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has given you another morning, don't be sure. You'll see the sunset of this day also. Wa khuz min sihhatika le maradik. Try to take out the maximum from your health for the period of your disease. Maybe you are diseased. Maybe you fall sick, and then you will not be able to do anything. So beforehand, try to compensate for that period of inactivity while you are still active, while you are still healthy. Try not only to fulfill the right of this time which you are passing, also to have save something for the future, to compensate for the time when you may fall sick. I mean, hayatikali mautik, and from this life of yours, extract maximum for your death. I quoted another hadith. Adunya mazratul akhirah. This world is the field where you have to sow the seeds, and akhirah is the place where you will reap the harvest. So you have to sow here to reap there. وكان ابن عمر رضي الله عنهما يقول إذا أمسيت فلا تنتظر الصباح وإذا أصبحت فلا تنتظر المساء وخذ من صحتك لمرضك ومن حياتك لموتك رواه الإمام البخاري رحمه الله. Now come to hadith number thirty عن ابي العباس سهل بن السعد السعدي رضي الله تعالى عنه قال جاء رجل الى النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فقال يا رسول الله دلني على عمل اذا عملته احبني احبني الله واحبني الناس فقال ازهد في الدنيا يحبك الله وازهد في ما عند الناس يحبك الناس رواه ابن ماجه this hadith is from the compilation of sunan by imam ibn majah rahimahullah the ravi sahal ibn sa'd as-sa'idi رضي الله عنه he says a person came to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he said oh messenger of allah Please tell me some act, some deed. Maybe if I am permitted to use this word in good sense, some trick. I want something by which I can get two things. 
that Allah comes to love me. And people also come to love me. Dullani ala amalin. Tell me some deed, some action, some act, some trick. Iza abiltuhu. That when I have done. Ahabbani Allah. Allah will love me. Wahabbani an nas. And the people will also love me. The reply was, Izhat fi dunya. Renounce the luxuries and comforts of this world. This is zuhud. There are necessities <coughs> that you have to have. Because Allah has sent you. You have to preserve yourself. And for that purpose, وَإِنَّ لِنَفْسِكَ عَلَيْكَ حَقًّا وَإِنَّ لِزَوْجِكَ عَلَيْكَ حَقًّا وَإِنَّ لِزَوْجِكَ عَلَيْكَ حَقًّا These are the حُقُوقُ الْعِبَادِ that you have to give. But only that much which is essential. This is Zuhud. Don't try to gather more comforts. Don't try to gather more luxuries. You need a house? Okay, it's your right. But not a palatial house. Not, you know, extraordinarily furnished and decorated. No. A house. You need to cover your body. But the death should be for only that purpose. Izhad fi dunya. Izhad fi dunya. Yuhibbuk Allah. Allah will love you. And the second thing. Wazhad fi ma indan nas. And you behave as if you have no interest in what the people have. You are, visiting, you are visiting a friend of yours, a relative of yours, and you find, you know, certain things over there. And that person sees, you know, his eyes are opened, you know, he's seeing all these things with lust, lustfully. He will hate you. And if he feels he has no interest in these things, what to speak of asking for anything? What to speak of begging? Izhad fima in the nas. Whatever is there with the people, their wealth, their belongings, their palatial houses, their furnished and decorated drawing rooms, you will just pass by them. Putting a glance as if you have no interest in these things. Bazaar se gudra hu, kharidar nahi hu. I am passing through the market, but I am not a purchaser. You have become law, you have become nas, then the people will love you. This is another aspect of the same thing. If you are a stranger in this world, if you feel it is not your real life, it's not your real home. This will be the result. This will be the attitude. Now we come to the third hadith. That is number 19. An Abil Abbas, Abdullah ibn Abbas, رضي الله عنهما قال, The narrator is Abdullah, son of Abbas, رضي الله تعالى عنهما. And Abbas was the uncle of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now the son of Abdullah was also Abbas. So an Abil Abbas, it has been narrated from the father of Abbas, that is Abdullah, 
who was the son of Abbas. This is the full name. And Abil Abbas, Abdullah ibn Abbas, in radiyallahu anhuma, قال, كنت خلف النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم. Once I was behind the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. In another narration of this hadith, we find, كنت رديف النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم. You know, if you are sitting on a camel and somebody is sitting behind you on the same camel, he is your radif, riding the same camel or riding the same horse, two people. The one who is behind is radif and that is the condition which is depicted in this hadith. Again note, Abdullah ibn Abbas belongs to the second generation. And here also you will find the same attitude, teaching. This is called Irshad, Murshid, who teaches the right thing, leads to the right path. Here Muhammad وسلم, is acting as an educator, as a teacher, as a mentor. Kaal. كنت خلف النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يوما فقال لي يا غلام when I was sitting behind him on the back of the camel going somewhere now the prophet is making the best use of this time فقال لي يا غلام he said to me oh my boy إني أعلمك كلمات I am going to teach you certain words, certain things, certain teachings. Now, this is the essence of Iman Billah. The essence and the results and fruit of Iman Billah in our selected course of study, they are discussed in Surah Al Taghabun. The first section of Surah Al-Taghabun narrates the three fundamental articles of faith, Iman Billah, Iman Bil Risalat, and Iman Bil Akhirah. And the second section of Surah Al-Taghabun deals with the fruits of Iman. If it is real Iman, if it has really entered your heart, if it has really penetrated your feelings and your thinking, <coughs> now what will be the fruits? If you can remember, first of all, Razi Baradai Rab, you must think whatsoever is coming to me is coming from Allah. There are intermediary agencies, material or personal. Somebody has given you this thing, but it is not from him, it's from Allah. Somebody has thrown a stone on me, but if it has struck you, it's from Allah. He is only the medium. So whatever is coming from Allah, you should accept it. Gladly. Razi Baradayaram. This is the first fruit of Iman discussed in Surah Al-Taghabun. The second, Wati'ullah, Wati'ul Rasul. And I say in that dars, you know, there are certain fruits which we can call esoteric, which, is, which are invisible, can't be seen. These fruits, these flowers are flowering only within the realm of your inner personality. Razi Baradai Rabb. But the second is which is visible, which is outside, your outside behavior. This will be this will be visible. Evident to the people. He is obeying Allah. He is obeying the commands of Allah and His Messenger. Then again turning to the esoteric part. Allahu la ilaha illahu wa ala allahi falya tawakkalil mu'minun. Tawakkul should be only with Allah. 
ولا تتخذو من دونی وکیلا سول کانفیڈنس ٹوٹل کانفیڈنس آن اللہ ناٹ آن دی میٹیریل مینس ناٹ آن ادر پیپل اینڈ ہینس نو ہوپ فرام اینی ون ایلس ایکسپٹ اللہ نو فیئر فرام اینی ون ایلس ایکسپٹ اللہ تقون This is the definition of Aliyah. They have come to believe and just motivating force, Taqwa is pushing them forward and forward and forward and forward. This is Vilayat. Then the fourth, because you are here in this world, related to this woman, she is your mother, you are related to this, She is your sister. Related to this woman, she is your wife. Related to this girl, she is your daughter. Related to father and brother and sons and so on, your tribe. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu inna min azwajikum wa awladikum aduwan lakum fasaru. The natural love that you have for these relations It's a sign of potential danger. It's the red signal. Beware of them. Lest they take you astray. Pursuing their wishes. Fulfilling their demands. Trying to please them. Maybe that you cross the lines of the Sharia. To be on the guard. Ya ayyuhu al-lazeen amanu inna min azwajikum wa awladikum aduwan lakum fahzaru. The fifth one. Inna ma amwalukum wa awladukum fitna. These are the things on which you are being tested. Your belongings. And your progeny. Especially sons. These five things, if you have understood, فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ مَا اسْتَطَعْتُمْ وَاسْمَعُوا وَاتُعُوا وَأَنْفِقُوا خَيْرًا لِأَنْفُسِكُمْ That is the result. Now the same thing you'll find here in this hadith. عن عبد الله عباس عبد الله بن عباس رضي الله عنهما قال كنت خلف النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يوما فقال لي يا غلام إني أعلمك بكلمات I'm going to teach you a few words. احفظ اللہ یحفظ کا always remain mindful of Allah and he will grant you protection فَذْكُرُونِ اَذْكُرْكُمْ keep me in your heart and mind guard that no moment of your passes in ghafla don't be ghafil always remain mindful of Allah he will protect you احفظ اللہ تجدہ امامک تجاہک in another narration of this hadith the word is امامک that is why it came on my tongue if you are remembering Allah If you keep him in your mind, you'll always find him before you. But if you have turned your faces against him in another direction, you are ignoring him. You believe more in material means. 
you have more faith in other people, he can do me a favor. Yes. He can solve my problem. Yes. This need of mine can be fulfilled by him. Forgetting Allah. So Allah also leads you to them. Go. Now we also give the, you over to them. But if you can keep Allah in your mind, Ifazillah Yahfaska. Ifazillah Tajidho Tajahak. You'll find him before you. He will never betray you. Iza Salta Fasalillah. Whenever you have the need to ask for something, ask Allah and Allah alone. All the hearts of all the human beings are within his two fingers. He can turn the heart of anybody. And the idea would come in his mind. And he will himself come to you and fulfill your need. Why ask him directly? Ask Allah. By the salta, fasalillah. Whenever you have to ask, ask Allah. Why the stanta, fastain billah. Whenever you want some help, ask the help from Allah. Iya ka nabu tu, iya ka nastain. To say these words and utter these words is easy. But to remain firm on it is not so easy. Unless the roots of Iman have gone very deep down into your personality. Afadillah ya hafazka. Afadillah tajadhu tajahak. Iza salta fasalillah wa iza stanta fasta'in billah. Walam. And let it be known to you أن الأمة لم اجتمعت لا ينفعوك بشيء لم ينفعوك إلا بشيء قد كتبه الله لك. If all the people gather together to do some good to you, they will not be able to do any good to you, except the one that Allah had already decreed for you. This is istighna. Un ki umide kalil, un ke makasid jalil. Cut off all hopes from human beings. Focus all your hopes on Allah. Un ki umide kalil, un ke makasid jalil. Have higher goals in life and accept the least. When your acceptations are not very high, you'll be glad with whatever Allah gives you. Whatever my Saki has put down in my glass, it's all his grace. Whether it is bitter, it appears bitter to me. Asa an takrahu shayin wa huwa khairun lakum. Wa asa an tuhibu shayin wa huwa sharun lakum. Wallahu ya'lamu antum la ta'lamun. It's just possible that you might dislike something. Something might appear to be very unpleasant for you. But it is good for you. It's just possible that something is very pleasant, very welcome to you. But it is really harmful for you. Allah knows you don't know. This is Razi Baradai Rab. Ham bi taslim ki khu dalenge be niyazi teri adat hi sahi. Taslim o raza. 
وعلم ان الامه لم اجتمعت على ان ينفعوك بشيء لم ينفعوك الا بشيء قد كتبه الله لك وان اجتمعوا على ان يضروك بشيء لم يضروك الا بشيء قد كتب الله عليك and if all the people gather together joined hands with each other to do you some harm they will not be able to do it except the thing which allah has already decided for you then why to fear what has whatever has happened comes from allah why huzn is my lord qul lan yusibana illa ma kataba allah lana huwa maulana nothing can be fall us except that which our lord has decided for us and he is our friend is not our enemy if you are a friend of allah allah is your friend allah huwa waliyyul ladina amanu yukhrijuhum minaz zulumati ilan nur he is the wali of ahl iman but provided you become a wali for him you are the supporters of people who are in revolt against him you are serving them for a handful of dollars you are serving the system you are like the horses drawing their chariots and then you ask allah this is the incident that was narrated to me by the person a very extraordinary person who came in my life that was haji abdul wahid he did his m in english literature in 1930 he participated in the hijra movement the hijra towards afghanistan during the movement of caliphate etc etc so there was in him enthusiasm for islamic work he remained together with maulana Ali Mia for one year in Lucknow teaching him English and learning from him Arabic he was a personal friend of Maulana Muhammad Manzoor Nomani he was very near to Maulana Madudi also but he remained nearest to Maulana Maulana Ilyas rahimahullah But this incident took place in his life when he went to Hijaz for Hajj. It was, I think, early 40s. There he met Maulana Ubaidullah Sindhi, the revolutionary, and he was so much impressed by his personality that he stayed back after performing Hajj. He stayed back in Mecca for another one year to enjoy his company. to benefit from his company and during that period this incident took place he was the principal of a high school but that high school was of a higher order than the ordinary high schools in koita now warna ubadullah sindhi was impressing upon him you must give up this service go ahead serve your lord serve allah serve his deen teach in english ali hada khuliqta ali hada umirta just as ibrahim bin adam he was so to say a king and he was going out for shikar for game and there he heard a voice might be the voice came from his own conscience from his own soul and spirit might be from some angel ya ibrahim wa lihada khuliqta am lihada umirta is this the thing for which you were created is this the thing for which your lord has directed you and that was the turning point in his life so mauna abdullah sindhi said to him give up these things wala 
Haji Abdul Wahid said that once I said, yes, we want to do it, but we can't, you know, eat the breads of Jumerat's evening. Meaning thereby, how can we accept our livelihood being cared by Muslims? We need something to survive. If we devote all our time, where from shall we eat? The only way will be that the Muslims look after you. So he used the word, the worst word that could be used. Jumeirat ki roti ho par tu nipal sakte. The taunt in it, it pricked. I can just imagine even now, the way Warana Haji Abdul Wahid was narrating this incident to me. And for a moment he remained quiet. Ubaidullah Sindhi. First he said, yes, 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 it's okay. You are correct. You are a very honorable type of people. How can you accept these charities, these meager assistance from the Muslims? Yes. But then suddenly it changed. Jalan! You don't have to do this. انگریز کی گاڑی میں جتے ہوئے ہو گھوڑوں کی طرح اور وہاں سے تنخواہ ملتی ہے تو یہ تمہارے لیے عزت کا مقام ہے اور مسلمان غریب اگر اپنا پیٹ کاٹ کر تمہارے لیے کچھ پیش کر دے تو یہ تمہارے لیے توہین اور تزلیل کا باعث ہے جس بھی مسٹی ممبر وٹ وی آر ڈوئنگ الہذا خلقنا ہم لہذا امرنا We belong to the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What for was this Ummah raised? For doing what we are doing? So, Ya Ghulamu inni yuallimuka bi kalimatin A fazillah ya fasq A fazillah tajidu tujahak Iza salta fasalillah Wa iza sta'anta fasta'im billah وَعَلَمْ أَنَّ الْأُمَّةَ لَمْ يَجْتَمَعَتْ عَلَى أَنْ يَنْفَعُوكَ بِشَيْءٍ لَمْ يَنْفَعُوكَ إِلَّا بِشَيْءٍ قَدْ كَتَبَهُ اللَّهُ لَكَ وَإِنْ اجْتَمَعُوا عَلَى أَنْ يَضُرُّوكَ بِشَيْءٍ لَمْ يَضُرُّوكَ إِلَّا بِشَيْءٍ قَدْ كَتَبَهُ اللَّهُ عَلَيْكَ رُفِعَتِ الْأَقْلَامِ The pens have already been lifted but جَفَّتِ الصُّحُف and the pages and the books have already dried Now what is this writing? The writing we read in the fourth hadith. On the 120th day, after 120 days, the fetus is in the womb of the mother. The angel is sent. You marobe kalimatin. Bekat be riskehi wa ajalihi. Everything is written. Whatever is going to come to you is written. And after that writing, the ink has dried up and the pens have already been lifted. Rufiyat al-Aqlam wa jaffat al-Suhuf. This hadith has been narrated by Imam Tirmizi rahimahullah. Now come to the last. That is hadith number 38.